Hi and welcome. My name is Cal Evans. I'm here with my good friend, Olivia Liddell, and we're going to talk about working remote. But before we do that, Olivia, please introduce themselves because I know how wonderful you are, but you need to let everybody else know how wonderful you are. Uh, thanks so much for having me here, Cal. I'm Olivia Liddell. I'm a technical uh, curriculum developer at Amazon Web Services. And what I do in my role is develop training courses for our partners and customers who are trying to learn more about AWS products and services. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to be here and talk about this topic today. Very cool. Hey, before we get started, uh, can you help me reset my Amazon password? No, I, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I know you probably get a hundred of those every week. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and if they're from family, they're usually serious. So yeah. at least the, 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 that's the kind of questions I get from my family. So <laughs> anyhow, hey, um, let, let's start off, uh, back up a little bit pre-COVID. Were you working remote before everybody started, before it became cool? I was, yeah. So with, with my job, because my team is spread all across the U.S. and all time zones, um, we were always remote, even pre-COVID. And, and so I started at AWS just about two years ago, so fall of 2019, and I was able to get settled in that a little bit. And then when COVID hit, I thought, okay, well, I can see that this is going to be a big transition in many ways for a lot of people, but the good thing for me and my team we already had remote, fully remote processes in place and we're able to keep on rolling. Well, that is uh, very fortuitous, very fortuitous. Uh, now, um, do you prefer working remote? Do you prefer the office? Do you prefer something in between? Well, you know, everybody's a little bit different. What's your take on it? Yeah, I personally prefer working remotely. I'm very introverted, very, very introverted, more than most people realize. And so it helps me to be able to have that time and space for myself to be able to be productive and get my work done without having to be distracted necessarily. And another thing I feel I should mention that's probably going to shape a lot of the rest of my answers today is earlier this year, I was diagnosed with ADHD and also what's called APD, auditory processing disorder. So at the same time that I'm with the ADHD, I'm having difficulty with trying to focus and keep my, my train of thoughts clear. I'm also realizing I'm having things like auditory sensory overload and not being able to process multiple sound streams at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so for me, being working remotely, has it, it's been so good to not have to worry about being in a busy office where, you know, you've got like so many different people shouting across the room. So for, for those two reasons, especially, it's been great to be able to craft my home environment to be exactly as I need it to be. You know, I, I think you and I um, share a couple traits there. Um, I, I'm also an introvert and that surprises a lot of people because I'm on stage an awful lot as you are. Um, I see you at conferences all the time. In fact, you're going to one of my favorite uh, Longhorn this week. But, um, you know, the people assume since we're on stage that we've got to be extroverts. And I'm like, no. And, oh, you know, right. when I get off stage after a talk, the first thing I do is go back to my room and just decompress for a few minutes. But maybe and I've not really thought about it, but maybe that's why I enjoy working remotely as well, too, because I can control my environment. I don't have other people intruding in when I when I don't want it. I, I never really put that much thought into why I just know I like working remote. Um, I, I've tried the office thing um, in the past couple few years and just it, it's, it, I, it's I'm not comfortable there. So yeah. Now you've got a wealth of experience in working remote. What's the hardest part about working remote? Yeah, I think one of for me, one of the, the most difficult things about working remotely can be making sure that I stay connected with my colleagues. Because like I was saying, with being an introvert, it's very easy for me to shift towards the angle of staying in my corner, staying in my bubble. But I think that being in a remote environment, I know that I need to be very intentional about the interactions I have with my colleagues. Now, it doesn't mean I have to go to every single virtual happy hour or thing like that, but just making sure that I can take the time to connect with my colleagues, even just sending messages on Slack to say, hey, hope you're having a great day. How was your weekend? Because you yeah. don't, it, when you're in an office, it's so easy to be able to have those interactions naturally when you're at the water cooler, when you're sitting next to someone. So I think taking the time to do that, it, it's difficult for me, but it's worthwhile because it helps to build trust with my co colleagues. 
Yep. Yeah. I was working a, a job that was based out of um, San Francisco. And uh, this was uh, probably seven, eight years ago. And um, they, they wanted me in the office, you know, I, once a quarter, you know, I'd show up. So I, I'd show up to the office and I would park my laptop, put my headphones on and do my work. Now I, I was talking to the team and um, it wasn't Slack at the time, but it was uh, maybe Skype or something, whatever we were using at the time. Uh, you know, all, all the time. But my manager finally come over and says, why are you so antisocial? You're just sitting here with your headphones on. And I'm like, I- I've been talking all day. I just haven't been talking in person. So right. <laughs> that's my style. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I get that. Uh, now, let's flip that over. What's the best part about working remote? Oh, the best part for me by far is the work-life balance. That that is, I've even heard some people refer to it as life-work balance because they prioritize the rest of their life over work. And I think for myself, when I previously was working more in an office environment, the amount of time I would spend commuting and just going back and forth and having to do things like figure out, oh, when am I getting my grocery order? Now it's a lot easier for me to balance that and be able to take the time for myself. I think especially over this past year, the topic of self-care has become something that we're all hearing a lot more about. And for me, even self-care doesn't have to be big, but even something like taking five minutes out of your day to meditate. Think about if you're in an office environment and you know you need five minutes to yourself. A lot of offices don't have that kind of space where you can just go somewhere and close your eyes for five minutes. And for me, being able to balance that has just been been, been life-changing. I, I got to say, for me, the best part is I get to spend the entire day with my dog. You know, um, you know, she's when I sit down in my chair, she we have a routine. She comes over, she gives me kisses. I give her pets and then she doesn't move for eight hours. But, <laughs> uh, you know, but, um, you know, I know she's yeah. always there. And, um, you know, I, 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 I when I was working, I, like I said, I did do. Uh, I, I tried going back into an office um, a few years ago, and that was one of the things I missed because, you know, I, I, I see my wife online or I talk to my wife online all the time. And in fact, she's been slacking me. That was the the, the hair brushing you kept hearing. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I talk to her all the time, but, I, you know, I would not get to, to hang out and play with my dog. And so yeah. that's the, one of the things I love about it. And that's a, a stupid thing. I know. No, um, no. Controlling the environment and all that, but being able just to take a break and go play with my dog is um, one of the greatest things for me. Yeah. Technology changes and always marches on. You know that better than anybody who work at Amazon. The oh, beast. yeah. <laughs> um, other than Zoom, which we're using to record this, uh, what's the one tool that you really couldn't do remote work without? Yeah, uh, for me, uh, and this connects back to my ADHD that uh, I was mentioning earlier. Uh, are you familiar with what's called the Pomodoro technique? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. So for anyone who's uh, watching, listening into this and is not familiar, the Pomodoro technique is something that you can use to chunk up your work into dedicated periods of on and off. And you can use different timers to help you set timers of work and and time that you focus. So for example, uh, what I do, I set the Pomodoro timer on on the website that I use for say 15 minutes of dedicated focus. And then after 15 15 minutes have passed, I get a five minute break. And then I start the cycle again. I will admit there are some days if it's really hard for me to focus, I will set the work timer to five minutes because I figure, Five minutes of dedicated focus is far better than me spending half an hour trying to figure out how to get started. So um, you can Google Pomodoro timers and there's so many on on the web that can help you with that. And that's been my biggest uh, tool for staying focused. Yeah. Um, My good friend, Mr. Matthew Wiro Finney, which you might have run run into Matthew at conferences. Um, Mm -hmm. In the PHP community, he's just known as MWAP. Um, yeah. well, Matthew introduced me to this and literally uh, Pomodoro, if I'm correct, is Italian for tomato. And yes. literally he had a kitchen timer shaped like a tomato yes. and he would set it for 20 minutes and he had it right there on his desk. Yep. And he was the one that introduced it to me. Um, oh, these many years ago. But um, yeah, he took it literally. <laughs> you know, he had that tomato <laughs> timer. But that's a, it's a great way of doing it. And, um, and it does, it focuses the mind. I find that if I sit down and I say, you know, for the next 
X number of time units, this is the task, yep. then um, I, I can really dive in and focus. And honestly, if I can get started on a task, I can usually finish it. It's that always that getting started, the, that churn at the beginning of a project that really is hard for me to overcome. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because usually when I sit down and when I know I need to use a Pomodoro timer, in my mind at first I think, oh, it's going to be a whole full day of me on the clock, off the clock. But usually I only have to do it like maybe two or three rounds. And by then it's like a positive snowball effect where then I'm able to more autofocus and then I don't need the timer. But it's, yeah, the getting started part is always the hardest. <laughs> it's tough. And, and once I get started, I, I was writing an article one time and um, I, I got so in, engulfed with it that um, I looked up and literally it was 11 p.m. And I had started this article about 10, uh, about 10 a.m. And my wife had come home, you know, she'd taken the dog out, she'd cooked dinner, all of this kind of stuff. And I was just so focused that I lost myself in it. But yeah. <laughs> getting started was a real problem. But once I got it, once you you, you put it well, once the snowball started rolling, man, it's yep. you roll downhill in a hurry. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, obviously you like working um, remote. Do you find working remote is less or more distracting? And the reason I'm asking this is for me, sometimes I have problems with all the different ways people can contact me. Do, do you mm -hmm. have this problem? And if you do, how, how are you resolving it? Yeah, that is um, one of the things I found as well with distractions, because when I first started working from home, I thought, oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm good. I, I will be so focused and undistracted. But then it, at, what I found is that it's so important for me to stay in work mode and not try to do work and all the house things that I need to do at the same time, because I can be sitting at the table, for example, and I'm working, writing a course, and then I look into the corner and think, oh yeah, there's that stack of mail that I needed to sort. I could do that. Oh yeah, there's that other thing I could do. So it's like being able to give myself a mental parking lot and say, I'm not doing the mail right now, but I'm not gonna just ignore it for the rest of the day but then yeah. also to what you described about being contacted by um, so many different channels I, I think that what's helped me as well is being able to uh, I turned off my outlook mail notifications so I don't get the pop-ups I also turned off my slack notifications so I don't get pop-ups there at work as well mm -hmm. and sometimes what I'll even do is tell myself that I'm really just going to check Slack and email at the top of the hour and at the bottom of the hour. So like at one o'clock and one thirty, and that way I'm able to stay focused. And um, usually there's no big emergencies that come up, but then it helps me to stay focused and, and yeah. not be so distracted. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that is um, excellent advice. Uh, I, I, you know, with Twitter and Slack and email and Facebook and Instagram and all these other things, I, I've, I have been slowly weaning myself off of that. And you hit the nail on the head. I've turned off notifications. And yes. if, if I don't have notifications, then I consciously have to go out and do it. And I'm still working yes. on not going out and doing it as often as I do. Mm -hmm. But at least it's not, oh, you know, I'm working on, oh, look, shiny. You know, it's, yeah. it's I, I can stay focused a little bit longer. Because, you know, in, in programming and in, um, in any content creation, um, you know, the, the, the more focused you can stay for the longer amount of time, the, the, the better you are, you know, you get in the zone and that, from what I'm learning is that's not just a programming thing. That's a, uh, that's a creation thing. And, yeah. um, you hit that zone, you don't want to get back out of it. So, yeah, I also like that. I don't have to worry about distracting other people because I, uh, sometimes when I'm working in a course and, um, so for example, I'm working on this really interesting course right now about intro to AWS game tech. So all about game development. And right now I'm writing a module on game backends and there's some very highly technical concepts in there that I need to kind of talk my way through. And literally I'm sitting at my desk and talking this out loud. Can you imagine if I were doing that in an office? <laughs> And they would be like, Olivia, we love you. We love that you are into this game thing, but please stop talking. Yep, yep. So for, for anyone who can relate, uh, it, it's, it's great to be able to have that flexibility. <laughs> well, you know, in, in programming, there is the concept of rubber ducking. And yes. um, when you just talk it out to an inanimate object, I, I discuss things with my dog 
all the time. All the time. And, yep. you know, when I was in an office, I had stuffed elephants, you know, all over the place. Yes. And I would discuss it with the stuffed elephants. But since I'm here at the house, I've got the dog, I, you know, and, and the upshoot of that is my dog's a pretty good programmer now. So no, hey. uh, <laughs> but I, I understand that. And mm -hmm. yes, it is nice to be able to literally talk out loud and talk something through that is so much more to me than um, writing it down or trying to think it through in my head. So that's, yeah. that's an excellent point. Um, now, do you have your own separate workspace when you're working or do you um, commandeer the couch or the kitchen table? <laughs> yeah, so one of the things that changed for me during the pandemic was that I, I moved because I realized that I was living in this very small, tiny studio apartment in, in Chicago. And I'd been living there for about, oh my goodness, um, 12 something years. And then decided, I, since I'm going to continue to be working from home, I need some more space. So I moved out to the Chicago suburbs. And now I have the flexibility of like right now I'm working from my bedroom. I can also, I have a desk set up in the living room. I can work from the dining room table. Most importantly, when the weather's nice and not snowing in Chicago, I can work outside on the balcony. And oh, nice. yeah, I didn't have that before. And I, I think about how a lot of offices, like I know Amazon's offices are set up like this, where you can have flexible work spaces throughout the day. And I think that that for me is really important to be able to change a spot and sometimes changing my physical location can help me to get a fresh thought uh, or fresh perspective on my work. I still do most of my coding sitting right here because I've got a, um, a desktop machine, but I do have a laptop and a tablet that when I'm just doing emails or research or something like that, yeah, sitting out on the back patio and um, when, the, when the weather's nice is... Um, a, really a mood changer. It, it really yeah. is. I can go out there and do that for um, 15, 20 minutes and I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a much better headspace. So Definitely. Um, okay. One of the problems, at least a lot in um, tech, and I'm, I'm fairly sure this is true of most creative um, endeavors. Uh, one of the big problems we have is burnout. What do you do to avoid burnout? Yeah, that is a really um, in, in, important topic, I think. And there, there's two parts of this that I would say my, the first part of my answer is I make time to get out of the house and I, I'm very intentional about it. So for example, I go to spin class, like indoor cycling class three or four times a week. Nice. And uh, it's, it's wonderful because it, I often, I also have like a home gym set up too that I can do during the day. But for me, getting out and having a, a dedicated schedule to do that, it makes it so that, I mean, if I didn't do that, I could in theory stay inside for an entire week at a time and not emerge. So I try not to do that. Yeah. The second thing is, if the burnout that I'm experiencing is related more to just kind of feeling stagnant and just feeling stuck, I, I think that it's so important to learn how to have those intentional conversations with people who can help you to fix that. And in, in my case, recently, I was feeling pretty burned out with the work I was doing. Um, I was on kind of the same project I've been working on for the past two years and mm. spoke with my manager about that to say, here's uh, how I'm feeling about this. Here's what I'm hoping we can have as an outcome for this. And in this way, it's it's less of just I'm venting and more of I'm asking for a solution here and I need your help. And that was actually how I was able to get onto this game tech course. And it's great. And I just know if I hadn't spoken up about that, that wouldn't have happened. And I, mm -hmm. I, I mentioned it's important to speak up because especially when you're working remotely, people cannot read your mind. Yeah. People can't walk past your desk every day and see, well, Olivia seems to be looking a little bit, uh, she doesn't seem as happy lately. People don't get that. So speaking up is so important in helping to avoid burnout. Yeah, I, um, I talk a lot to managers and uh, I, because I've been managing remote developers since 1999. That was when I hired my first remote developer and have learned <clears throat> quite a bit along the way about managing remote developers. And one of the things I, I tell them is, look, it's your responsibility to go and find out how things are going. And if you've not heard from them in four hours, you, you go ping them. Um, you, do, you don't just leave them alone and hope things are good. You've got to make uh, to, to be reaching out to them because 
especially with developers, um, you know, we'll cocoon and we won't tell anybody there's a problem until it's too late. And yep. as a manager, you've got to head that off. So, yep. but okay. Here's the chance for you to tell me what question I did not ask that you think it's important that our audience know about working remote. So what didn't I ask? Mm, okay, good question. Let me see. I would say, what would you, what advice would you have about, so you just talked about managing remotely. I would say uh, something about best practices for, oh, communicating in a remote mm. environment. You know me, That's communication a is, a, is my happy place. <laughs> yep. And I, I think, so when, when I think about best practices for communicating in a remote environment, one thing is to over communicate, at least initially, mm -hmm. because again, connecting back to this idea of other people cannot read your mind. And so, especially if I'm starting on a new project with people that I haven't worked with before, I want to make sure that they know they can trust me and that mm -hmm. they don't have to guess, well, did Olivia do this part or not? Like, no, I will tell y'all where we are now. I will give you bullet points for what's coming up. Like I will over communicate and, and, and that's really important. But I think also it's important to try to establish your own communication preferences and, and processes. So, okay, this is going to sound like a really knit, like a really like picky thing, but <laughs> one of my pet peeves <laughs> is when someone will just send me a, a Slack message that just says, hello, and then nothing else. And then they wait for me to respond back and be like, hi. And I'm thinking, you know why you were reaching out to me. Please just tell me like, hello, and, <laughs> and yep. you know, it, it's, a, it's a small thing, but me bringing this up with my team, I, actually <laughs> the way that I brought this up with my team, I spun it into a bigger conversation about, hey, let's all talk about our communication preferences. So it was less of Olivia venting about what she doesn't like, and let's all have the chance to talk about what we could be doing to support each other better, so. I got what I wanted and it, it, it worked out well for the team as a whole. <laughs> it's funny that you should mention that particular one because for the longest time, and I'm talking 10 years here, um, that was my style of communication for text-based communication. I would mm -hmm. usually, instead of hello, it would be ping. You know, and my, th my thinking was I'm going to, I, I don't want to interrupt what they're doing. So I'm just going to ping them. And when they can get to it, they'll come back to me. The problem I have is if they didn't immediately come back to me and I went off on something else, I forget why I pinged them, you yeah, know, and yeah. at least a third of the conversations were I, dude, I got no idea why yep. I wanted to talk to you. So in, uh, the, in probably the past six to nine months, I have started I'll, I'll go ping, but then I'll also say, look, when you're around, here is my question, my issue, my problem, whatever, yep. you know, and I'll let them know, is this high priority, is this low priority, is this a yep. blocker for me, or, you know, can they just get to it when they want, because most of the time it's just, it's not a blocker, and so I, um, you know, I'm just looking for some, some information, so, yeah, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's something uh, I, I had never considered and in the past nine months, like I said, it's, it's really started to, to dawn on me that that's probably not the best way to do things. <laughs> and yeah, with me, with ADHD, the, and I explained to my team, the reason it helps me is that it gives me more processing time to be able to look through the full request and, and stay focused on that instead of, you know, someone messages me and I'm like, okay, I'm in the middle of talking with you, but now I'm also trying to talk to somebody else. And so... Yeah, the more I can focus, the the, the better. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, I, and I think for all of us, um, or for most of the vast majority of us, multitasking is a myth, okay? Oh. I, I don't know anybody that, th those that claim they can do it, I never see them do it well. Um, yeah. I, I, I stopped claiming I could multitask a long time ago when it dawned on me, no, I really can't. So. No, no, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Olivia, it has been my pleasure to be able to talk to you. Um, I, I am so upset that I'm not at Longhorn this weekend because I really wanted to hang out with you and Adam. And they, they've just got a great lineup of people that wow. I've been dying to see for the past couple of years. But hopefully um, in this next year, as we see events coming back um, to in person, we'll get to see each other and sit down and catch up. 
Thank you so much for sharing your insights on remote working with our audience. And I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Audience, thank you for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please let Gun.io know that you've enjoyed this. So they'll let me keep doing them. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.